Hey guys, this is Nathan, and welcome back to The Simple Life 2. So to start out today, we are going to get a couple of things straightened out, as well as do a couple of quests. So, well, we're going to start out in the quest book. So, we have this guy here, needs more heat. We need 8 sand, 8 gravel, and 8 clay. Well, if we look in our inventory, we have 64 of each here. So... Yeah, I would say that we have that one covered. So let's go ahead and detect that. Um, okay, what are we missing? One of two retrieval tasks. Certain materials will require more heat to soften enough by or for pouring and casting. A sturdy enough brick kiln should do the trick of smelting metals to liquids, but first you'll need some bricks that can handle the heat. Well, eight sand, eight gravel, eight clay. Ah, eight grout. Okay, so we still need to make some grout. So let's go ahead and do that real quick. So grout. I am grout. And we need clay blocks or we can just do it this way. So yeah, we need eight of those. All right. So let's try this again. No? What are we missing? What what are we missing? I am I'm confused. What's going on here? I don't understand. I do not understand what is going on here. Eat grout. Eat grout. Eight sand, eight gravel, eight clay. Uh, whatever, I don't know. All right, well, we can claim it now. So we get 48 more grout for that. Then we're going to have seared bricks. So we need 16 seared bricks here, but the grout you made seems like a good enough material to heat up into solid bricks. Stacking them together should give you the materials you need to get your smeltery built. The internal dimensions of the smeltery require a gap of at least one block to function. Use the materials in your book for more information. So we need to make 16 seared bricks. That is pretty simple, so we need to take this grout, dump it in the furnace. Each one will turn into a brick. So while we're waiting for that, we are going to work on our food issue, which obviously we have some major issues with food, and you know what, we're going to just make a whole bunch more grout. Why not? It is definitely not going to hurt anything. So we have some food issues, as you can tell, my food is down by four and a half hams. I am one heart injured. But I have 43 peanuts, 43 strawberries, 44 barley, and also I have more than a stack of sugar. So we have what we need here to make our sandwiches. So let's go ahead and take a look at what it's going to take to make that. So if we look at Pam's, we need our sandwiches. So where are, wow, that, that's kind of interesting. Okay, so let's find our jelly sandwiches, a gooseberry jelly, huh? So we need to make some bread. To make bread, we need dough. For dough, we need a water bucket, fresh water or something like that, wheat flour or some type of flour, and a mixing bowl. Now, the mixing bowl is really simple. We need some planks and a stick. So let's go ahead and grab a stick and some planks. All right, so there's that. Let's go ahead and do this and put a stick on right there and we get our mixing bowl. All right, that was simple enough. Now, next we need a mortar and pestle, uh, I believe. Um, let's take a look here. What did we need to make the flour? Um, ah, we need this guy, which is stone and a stick, not the Batania one. We need the Pam's Harvest Craft one. So we need a piece of smooth stone, or three pieces. So we'll grab three of those. We'll grab a stick, and this should do it. So let's go here, put a stick in there. There we go. All right, so we will combine that with our barley, and that's going to make the flour. 
Now, to make the water, did I just tear them up? Nope, I don't think so. So to make the water bucket, we need to actually make two buckets. So we're gonna grab two buckets and we're going to go out here, brave the night, even though I have been lighting a large area up, but we're gonna brave the night to come out here to this little pond and grab two buckets of water. Now, what we're going to be able to do with this, and this is going to be really nice, I have never seen this in any other mod pack. We take our two water buckets and place them here, and then we take three more iron and it makes an infinite water bucket. Now this is from Yield Tanks, and it even lets me keep my old buckets. But we just got the achievement Ocean in a Bucket. So now this infinite water bucket, combined with some flour and a mixing bowl, will give us dough. So we get tons and tons of dough. We still have our infinite water bucket and we have our mixing bowl. Now this stuff needs to be cooked in the furnace. Well, obviously our furnace is making seared bricks right now. So let's go ahead and make ourselves another furnace. And let's make two more. Why not? We need more furnaces. More furni? I think it's furni. So we'll go ahead and place these up here. We'll put those in one, these in the other, and then we will grab some coal. All right. So we'll have this cooking. And while that's cooking, we'll go ahead and grab our seared bricks here. Harvest a few peanuts. And go ahead and look at the quest book now. So the quest book wanted 16 of these seared bricks. So we have another one. So we need four bricks, actually. So we needed 16 of those. Actually, I had the perfect, no, I'm four short. Okay, so now the question that I have is, okay, that one's completed. So now we need four seared bricks. So let's go ahead and just do that. All right, so we've got 16 or six of those. So now if we detect this, we'll have 16 more seared bricks that we can claim. Awesome. So, wow, we are really getting a lot of stuff opened up here for Tinker's Construct. But the smeltery components has got to be the next one that we take care of. And this is going to be a choice reward. Interesting. With the bricks cooking and other materials handled, it's time to look at the core components that make up a smeltery that make a smeltery run properly. You'll need something to, to control the temperature, a way to drain the liquid out, a tank to hold the lava for fuel, and a receptacle to pour the liquids into. So we need a controller, a drain, a faucet, a tank, a basin, and a table. And that looks like it. So we'll go ahead and make all of those once we finally get some more bricks here, which actually let's go ahead and drop some more grout in there. Why not? We will definitely need it later. So we have a little bit of bread cooked now. So let's go ahead and grab that and we're ready to make our sandwiches now. So let's take a look at the sandwiches. So peanut butter is really easy. All that we need is a ju juicer and the peanuts. So I think we already have the juicer. Yes, we do. All right, so we'll take the juicer and the peanuts, combine those together, and that makes peanut butter. All right. So the next one is the jelly. So the jelly is sugar and whatever fruit we're using and a saucepan. Now the saucepan is just a single ingot and a stick. I don't have a single ingot. Okay, well, let's go ahead and grab eight of these. Which one of these furnaces can we interrupt? We will grab this one because that will now be done. Okay, we'll drop that back in there and we'll drop the remainder of that in there. So we have half a stack of bread already. Nice. So come on with that. Let's grab a stick while we're waiting. And there's our iron. We'll combine these two together, make ourselves a saucepan, and we need, uh, let's see here, How were we, what were we doing here? We were going to make the sugar and our stuff. Okay, so we need to take our sugar cane, convert that into sugar, 
Then we will take our strawberries, our sugar, and our saucepan. That's going to make strawberry jelly. Okay, so caramel? Nice. So what can we do with that stuff? Oh, we can make caramel apples. Nice. Chocolate caramel fudge. Hmm, that sounds like something for a woman. All right, well, the caramel apples. Wow. Holy cow. That does quite a bit. Three and a half. But our sandwiches, I think, are going to be a little better than that. But so now we have our sandwich. We have our peanut butter. We have our jelly. I believe we still need a cutting board. Yes, we do. And a cutting board is a piece of iron, a stick, and a plank. Now, we can use copper for this also, but I haven't melted any of my copper, and I don't really want to at the moment. So we dropped a whole bunch of stuff there. Let's grab a stick. Let's grab a eucalyptus stick and a plank. All right, so we need this. Oops, that's the wrong spot. And this. That makes our cutting board. Then we can put our bread, our peanut butter, and our jelly together. And there we go. Strawberry jelly sandwiches. So what we need is a little bit more uh, bread, which we have cooking. But that will come in really handy here in a little bit. So strawberry jelly sandwiches. These do 5 hunger and 12 saturation. So, yes, it would appear that all of the food items have been kind of buffed here, which is kind of nice, actually. But we should have enough bricks now to make all the stuff that we need for the smeltery. So let's take a look at that. Oh, we need to make a little bit of glass. We are going to need some glass. Let's see, sand is in here. We have a lot of sand. And we have an open furnace. Perfect. All right, so the smeltery. We need the controller. All right, well, the recipe has not changed on that. Uh, did we need a tank? Yes, we need a tank. All right, well, we don't have our glass yet. We need our faucet. So that recipe has not changed. Casting table has not changed. I get the feeling these recipes haven't changed. Nope. Oh, we are short on bricks. Okay. Well, we'll go ahead and make one of those. And then we just need one piece of glass and eight more bricks. Oh, it's so painful. Okay, well, we should have one piece of glass. We've got four. Let's go ahead and drop in another half a stack of grout. Oh, this is so painful. Let's see here. What do we got for bread? We got 21 more bread. That's actually more than we need to finish out all of our sandwiches. Uh, stuff so there we go now we need more jelly but we have 42 sandwiches that is really nice let's go ahead and drop off all of this stuff because we don't need that we have too much junk all right what can we get rid of that is completely full of materials and you should not be in there Okay, we're getting closer to something figured out. Uh, this one's miscellaneous items, so we'll put materials and you in there, as well as our wooden pickaxe. Um, bricks. All right, we have enough bricks. Okay, so a seared tank. Move our items. There we go. We should have everything now. Let's take a look at this. Detect. What am I missing? Okay, well, we just have to pick one. So we can take tin, aluminum, gold, copper, or iron. I'm not sure which one we want. I have not seen tin yet, but that doesn't mean that it won't be easy to find. I've found tons of iron, a fair amount of copper. We're not deep enough to find gold, and I found a lot of aluminum. Honestly, I think I'm going to take the tin. I kind of feel like the tin is the way to go. So there we go. That one is taken care of. Now we're going to have refinements. We've got cobalt, manulin, and ardite, aluminum brass, pig iron, night slime, and casting. whole bunch of these that we can take care of. 
But uh, at this particular moment in time, I kind of feel like I want to take a look at a few other things, get my inventory kind of straightened out, and stop with the book! Jeez! And that's kind of annoying, too. But anyway, yeah, I'm going to take care of a little bit of this stuff, and then I will be back. So to power the smeltery, I finally got down here to Y11, found a little bit of a lava lake and filled up my seared tank, but also I found some diamonds here, I found some diamonds over here, and I found some diamonds down there. So there's a bunch of diamonds around here. But also I found out that we have these dense ores. So know if I can actually mine that lead with a stone pickaxe. Guess let's try it here. Okay, yes I can. So maybe the dense ores just take it longer? Nope, actually it looks like the dense ores we can't mine with this stone pickaxe. Okay, well, that's good to know, I guess. Nickel. Hmm. Well, that's nice. So we got a whole lot of stuff here. Unfortunately, my inventory appears to be full. So let's take a look at what we can drop off in our bag. Maybe our infinite water bucket and our regular water bucket. Uh, the seared tank can go back in there because now we don't have a need for that. So, yeah, let's go ahead and grab our... Uh, we... Are we going to... No, harvestable, no. So we are going to have to get an iron pickaxe. Unfortunately, my bronze pickaxe is broken. So I gotta go back up through here and uh, get an iron pickaxe in order to be able to mine that stuff. So I have a little smeltery set up now. Got my lava in there, that was what I needed more than anything. And I've got these small seared bricks in here. Now if we take the regular bricks and put them in the crafting grid, it'll give you all of the variation of the seared bricks and eventually cycle back to the seared bricks. So you can pretty much make this any way you want. And I'm not sure if we needed these corners for this or not, but I went ahead and made it like this. I think it looks reasonable. I, I know we could do better. But so let's take a look at the quest book. So the next one we have is casting. And once materials are heated enough to melt and pour, you will need a way to shape them into the items that you want to craft. There are two different kinds of casts. One can be made from clay and it is destroyed when a hot material is poured on it. However, the other made of gold or aluminum brass will last a lot longer. There can also be stored. These can also be stored in a parts che part chest similar to the stencil table patterns you made earlier. Okay, so we need to make one blank cast. So what we need to do there, we have in here some molten aluminum brass. This is three pieces of aluminum and one piece of copper, and that will make the aluminum brass. So they want a blank one, so we just pour out the aluminum brass, wait for it to harden, and there we go. So let's detect this. This is going to give us three more blocks of aluminum brass. And that completes that one. So next up we have all of these guys. We're not going to worry about that at the moment. Wait, there was one for aluminum brass there. What's here? Okay, so one aluminum brass ingot. There are many different materials to experiment with. Aluminum brass has only one use for smelting, and that is to make high-quality casts. So, hmm... I don't think I'm ready for an ingot there yet. But so what I'm going to do, I am going to grab a brick. And also I'm going to melt this cast back down. So I'm going to grab a brick. And we're going to use this to make our ingot cast to start out with. So actually I guess we could make an ingot of aluminum brass. So we're going to drop that and those in there. Why not? Oh, wait, 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 wait. We don't need to cast the aluminum brass. We can just do this. There we go. So let's detect that and take a bucket of molten aluminum brass. What on earth are we going to do with a bucket of molten aluminum brass? All right, so what we need to do now 
I actually did need this ingot cast because what we're going to do now is melt out or pour out a little bit of bronze and the bronze we can now use to repair our tools. So if I grab a couple of these, get one of those pouring. So we have bronze tools at the moment. So if we go in here, I need to grab my pickaxe out of here. We'll put in our bronze pickaxe and one bronze ingot, and you can see it almost completely fixes that guy. So we will be able to fix our stuff now. Really happy about that. So yeah, I've got to finish pouring all of this stuff out of here and uh, hopefully we'll be able to get some more stuff later on. But I am out of time for today, so I'm going to say thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the episode, don't forget to give a thumbs up. If you are new to the channel, don't forget to subscribe. If you have any thoughts about what I've been working on or something that you would like to see, be sure to leave that down in the comments, and I will see you next time. Bye!